The Trump-Russia collusion story has been one of the most talked about and controversial events in recent history. But amidst all the chaos, one reporter stood out for his relentless pursuit of the truth. That reporter is John Solomon. John's reporting on this topic was groundbreaking and helped shed light on a widespread conspiracy that had been brewing behind the scenes for years. Thanks to John Solomon's hard work and dedication, we now have an inside look into a complex web of deceit that had previously been hidden from public view. John Solomon, welcome back to Better for America. Thank you for joining me. Great to be with you, Rebecca. This is a fun conversation. It sure is, John, and you've recently filed a lawsuit against the DOJ and the National Archives and Records Administration, claiming that they've improperly withheld hundreds of pages of declassified documents yeah. that detail the FBI's Russia collusion probe under President Donald J. Trump. Could you provide more details about the lawsuit and shed some light on why you believe that these federal agencies are attempting to keep these documents out of the official collection for the Trump presidency? Yeah, it's really extraordinary. In fact, they were supposed to be more than even that. They were supposed to be released to the American public. On the last couple of days that Donald Trump was in office, he signed a declassification order. It sits in the public realm. It sits in the Federal Register. Everyone can go see it. Declassifying the core documents that showed FBI abuses during the Russia collusion case. We know that the FBI uh, used a, a fake dossier or a dossier that turned out to be uncorroborated. They portrayed it as evidence of Russia collusion. It didn't exist. It came from Hillary Clinton. We knew all that, but there were other issues that went on, how they handled informants, how they targeted the Trump campaign, how they misled the courts, how they doctored evidence. They actually, one lawyer actually changed evidence, falsified evidence and submitted it to a court. And the president in his final days ordered all of that evidence from the FBI to be classified. The FBI wasn't very fond of that decision, but they, they complied. They got the documents ready. And on the 20th of uh, 2021, January 20th, 2021, the president was leaving. At the very last minute, uh, the FBI came by and said, oh, we might have left some stuff in the documents that's Privacy Act protected. Can we have them back for a few minutes? We'll make the changes. And don't worry, Mr. President, we'll put the documents out and comply with the order. And they grabbed the documents, literally at the 11th hour, I believe it was like 11 o'clock on January 20th, 2021. And then they never made them public. And not only did they not make them public, did they not comply with the lawful order of a president and the written instructions of his chief of staff, Mark Meadows, they then kept the documents, which would normally be artifacts of the Trump presidency, and they didn't put them in the National Archives. And uh, when I realized after several months that these documents weren't becoming public, I asked for permission. I went to President Trump's lawyers and said, I'd like to go in as a journalist. I don't represent the campaign or the president or his office. I want to go in as a journalist like I did 20, 30 years ago um, during the 1992 campaign when I asked Richard Nixon for permission and got permission to go get uh, documents that were not public in the Nixon archives about Ross Perot and his uh, 1992 presidential campaign. I asked President Trump's lawyers, could you do the same for me? I'm only going as a journalist. I want to go find these records in the archives. I went there and the archives said, oh, we don't have them. Like, well, how can that be? Well, the, the Justice Department, the FBI has them. They've never provided them to, the, to us at the archives. And so I waited several months. I prodded both the Justice Department, National Archives, please go get them. I got nice letters back saying we really want to put them in there. They really do belong as in the National Archives. And I never got anything. And so finally, after uh, more than nine months of pursuing the documents, um, I worked with the public interest law firm. America First Legal, and we filed a lawsuit saying, hey, the Justice Department is in violation of the Presidential Records Act. It has these documents that are declassified. They're clear records of the presidency. I have access to them in the archives if they were there, but they're not in the archives. Court, would you please order the Justice Department to put them in the archives? And so that's where we stand as of this moment. Very interesting. Uh, the recent FBI raid at Mar-a-Lago and the removal of 11 sets of allegedly classified documents has really raised so many concerns among the public sure. and our AMAC membership. Uh, President Biden's decision to empower the National Archives to waive executive privilege claims regarding yeah. the documents further adds to that distrust. Um, what impact might President Biden's move have on the ongoing investigation? 
That's a really good question. I mean, President Biden has two problems, which is first, he authorizes this um, investigation of President Trump, his likely rival in the 2024 election, right? And it, it is more than just waiving executive privilege. He actually ordered the White House General Counsel, according to documents I obtained uh, and have made public, uh, the ordered the National Archives to let the FBI come in and look at everything that Donald Trump had in his compound so they can open up a criminal investigation. So he instigates uh, the, the Biden White House actually instigates instigates the investigation of his political rival. Then, of course, the raid occurs several months down the road, and Joe Biden shames the president, former President Trump, and says, hey, this is a sloppy handling. And then it turns out Joe Biden had the same problem. He had classified documents he hadn't returned. And, oh, by the way, he knew he had the classified documents months before the raid on Mar-a-Lago, months before he made the comments. In fact, his own assistant said they moved him a couple times. Um, so Joe Biden has an identical record-keeping problem as Donald Trump. But then the added uh, complication of he's the guy that kind of pushes the FBI to go to the archives and start a criminal investigation. The White House General Counsel's Office sends that letter. I get that letter and make it public. So he initiates a criminal investigation against his rival on a, on a subject area where he himself has some legal exposure. Now Joe Biden himself is also facing an investigation about withholding classified information. Do you think that these documents could be related to nuclear secrets, as alleged by The Washington Post? Yeah, I don't think so. Based on what we know, I think we've now learned that they don't involve nuclear secrets. They, they, I think a lot of these documents are going to be historical documents that the president, President Trump, got when he was in the Oval Office. And like most presidents, they take their homework home to the residential side of the White House. And then the GSA, the uh, General Service Administration, created a system. At the end of the day, Mr. President, when you're done with your homework, you stick it in these boxes and we make sure that we preserve it. And what happened is President Trump, like every other president, probably like Joe Biden did when he was vice president, he took these documents, stuck them in a box. And then when, when President Trump left office, the box just got taped up. It's such a loose system. And they get sent to Mar-a-Lago and they're put in a storage logger. And I think you're going to find out, and I'm, I'm working on some journalism on this, I think over the next month that'll bring some light to this. I think this has been a problem for a long time, uh, that the preservation of classified documents wasn't made a priority by the archives or by the White House counsels of many White Houses, not just Donald Trump's White House. And it's, it's a loosey-goosey system that a foreign intelligence uh, agency might one day be able to exploit, so we need to fix it. it uh, but what's happened here is that uh, the Justice Department and the media and the Democrats in Congress have tried to weaponize this. Oh, Donald Trump has a problem and Joe Biden's OK, even though they did the exact same thing. And I think most Americans see through that like, oh, that's partisan politics. We've seen this before. Russia collusion, Ukraine, now classified documents. Most Americans see it as a partisan investigation. What the uh, this is my reporting it has nothing to do with my access to the archives, which was limited to just that single question about the Russia collusion documents. But what I've learned as a reporter is this special prosecutor, Jack Smith, who, by the way, in an earlier life was instrumental in coming up with the IRS plan to go after conservative groups. Remember the Lois Lerner scandal a decade ago under Barack Obama? He was involved in that, so he has a partisan tinge to him in the past. He uh, is looking at whether the president, President Trump, at some point after he got a subpoena for these documents, sent someone down to the locker to go retrieve some of these boxes. And, you know, the question is, did he remove something? Did he try to obstruct the probe? My suspicion is, based on what I know, um, this may turn out to be more of a, a report that he makes as opposed to criminal charges, but we'll have to wait and see. Wow. Very interesting. You know, uh, I, I agree with you. Our members certainly see through a lot of this. They do see they it do. as very partisan. And the conservative movement, this is what gets me concerned, John, is the conservative movement and the future of the Republican Party are really facing great peril. Uh, with the potential, in my view, for literal extinction if Congress doesn't start taking action, uh, the possibility of a presidential candidate campaigning from a prison yeah. cell could actually be a reality given the unrelenting attacks on Trump. Um, now, when we look at everything that's happening, uh, what, where I scratch my head is say, why aren't people going after Biden? Why aren't they really digging into, I mean, you certainly are doing great work and yeah. we appreciate you, uh, but what can Congress do and what should we be doing? Uh, there's so much more here that the American public needs to know about, but we're not hearing anything. 
Yeah, that, that's listen, I think you've hit it on the head. Uh, Democrats have been much more effective at using their oversight power to pin down their political enemies and to, uh, in some cases, they created the false aura of a scandal, but they created, you know, the aura of a scandal that tied down President Trump. Russia collusion was sustained for three years, even though there wasn't an ounce of proof that Donald Trump worked with Vladimir Putin to hijack the election. Not an ounce. In fact, they knew most of the evidence was bogus, and yet they continued to sustain it for three years. I think when people look at what the Democrats have done to weaponize a system against conservatives, there's a very troubling question that goes to the essence of our constitutional republic. For most of our 246 plus years as a nation, as a constitutional republic, we've operated with the idea that justice is blind. You don't look at the defendant, you look at the facts, and if there's a crime, you charge that person and they're presumed to be innocent, and then you have to try to prove in court as the government that they did something wrong. Nancy Pelosi showed us what Democrats now think with her comments saying that, well, Donald Trump will get a chance to prove his innocence. We're not supposed to prove our innocence. We're assumed innocent under our system. But the investigations of Jack Smith, of the Georgia prosecutor down in Georgia, of Alvin Bragg in New York, have started with a different premise than almost any criminal investigation in prior history until the last six or seven years. They started with the person. We want to investigate Donald Trump, and then we'll find out what crime we want to hang on him. That started with Russia collusion, right? They knew they just wanted to get Trump, and they decided Russia collusion was going to be the shingle they were going to hang on his his house. And all through his presidency, they kept concocting a crime or an allegation of a crime to pin down the president. That's a perversion of our justice system that really hasn't existed through all the other times in our history. And if that doesn't get corrected, if the people who perpetrate that philosophy and those actions don't get punished, it's going to become the norm in America. And how stunning is this to the uh, to uh, people? We know most Americans think it's wrong. But when the president of El Salvador, when the president of Mexico says, you guys have become a banana republic, don't you ever lecture us about democracy after what you're doing to President Trump? And those are countries that don't have a great history of, 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 of fair justice. You know America's standing in the world has been harmed by what happens here. Now, let's flip it around. Sitting in plain view, sitting in uh, clear evidence. We can see it with our own eyes, as well as we can see that our U.S. border at the South is open. There is evidence that Hunter Biden did not pay his taxes. There is evidence that Hunter Biden did foreign lobbying and didn't register. It's sitting out and open. His lawyer admits he paid a $2 million back tax, so he didn't pay taxes. The question that it troubles everybody in Washington right now is why hasn't Hunter Biden been charged? Why isn't, with that prima facie evidence sitting out there, hasn't that been charged? Over the last few days, I've been able to get us an answer on that. And what that answer is, is there is a senior criminal investigator who has worked on the Hunter Biden criminal case. He's a career man, no politics, doesn't even have a social media feed. He's an apartisan IRS investigator who for years has gone after the most important tax cases in the world, including the famous Swiss bank ta tax case, one of the most famous real legitimate IRS prosecutions in, in American history. Um, that agent has come forward, gotten whistleblower protection and related to the inspector general, and he will soon be able to provide this to Congress, that for many months now, political appointees of the Biden Justice Department have blocked bringing charges against uh, Hunter Biden, even though the agents and even the tax division of the Justice Department believe that an indictment is warranted. That is a very troubling thing. We've now gone from the ethical question of the Bidens having an influence peddling scandal to a potential cover up, a, an obstruction of justice. Uh, knowing that that feud has been going on and there's paper and, and eyewitnesses to it should allow Congress to get to the bottom of this and ask the question, did we not only weaponize the Justice Department to go after Donald Trump, did we create a Justice Department that at all expense tried to protect Joe Biden and his family? And we have to get an answer to that. James Comer, the House Ways and Means Committee, the House Judiciary Committee, and the Senate Judiciary Committee, I believe will all band together in a single investigation and get to the bottom of this. But it's very troubling when a decorated senior career agent in the IRS says, I'm being blocked from uh, treating Hunter Biden like every other tax uh, case I, I've uh, pursued as an agent because of politics. And oh, by the way, there's another implication for this. Just a month ago, just a month before this uh, agent 
emanated uh, into the inspector general's world, into the whistleblower world. Merrick Garland was asked point blank by Chuck Grassley, the senator from Iowa, sir, are you aware of any political appointee who's tried to block or stop uh, the U.S. attorney in Delaware from bringing criminal charges? He answered, no, no one will do it. He has, he said, the attorney general, uh, the, that Attorney, uh, that U.S. Attorney Weiss, the man who's been running the uh, Hunter Biden investigation, a holdover from the uh, Trump years, has full authority. He can bring it anywhere. No one can block it. That does not appear to be true. That means that a, a cabinet member in the Biden administration may soon face questions about the honesty of his testimony. Those are the implications of what's going on in the Biden side. Unbelievable. I mean, it really is quite shocking. And uh, on the other hand, uh, it's almost expected because we've seen so much over and over again uh, happen that just doesn't make a lot of sense. And it's so critical for the American people to have access to information that sheds light on yeah. the truth and the actions of their government officials. Uh, so, wow, uh, lots of information here, John. Uh, it's not about partisan politics or personal agendas. Oh. It's about ensuring that our government is accountable to the people that it serves. John Solomon, thank you so much for your time, your insights. We look forward to having you back as more details unfold here. And keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this episode, you can listen to more just like it. Check us out on iTunes, Spotify, or by downloading the AMAC app. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Until next time, I'm Rebecca Weber. This is your podcast, Better for America. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful evening.